something more for us. It's so good. Sing Jai Radha Madhava.
very nice. Can I give you a small introduction to everyone? So, I had a little bit of a message in the group, the Maharaj's little bit of an introduction. So, His Holiness Bhakti Vignavinash Nashik Maharaj was initiated by Srila Prabhupada in London in 1971. A year later, he received second initiation. He has been preaching for over the last 25 years in Asian countries such as India, Philippines, China, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysia and Thailand. And of course, Dubai, Guru Maharaj, <laughs> at least. <laughs> uh, though through his years of preaching, he has given countless souls practical guidance and deep inspiration. Taking sannyas in Mayapur in 1994 from Tamal Krishna Goswami did not mean much of a change in his lifestyle, since Maharaj was always, has always been strict in his sadhana. Whoever gets to know Maharaj admires and respects his sincere and faithful practical of chanting, sorry, and faithful practice of chanting the holy names of the Lord. He truly walks his talk. Maharaj has been teaching with the MI since its inception. MIHE. MIHE. Yeah. So Maharaj ji is also, you know, we have a Vaishnav Institute of Higher Studies and Mayapur Institute of Higher Studies. So Maharaj bo courses bhi conduct yeah. karte hain. No? Yeah. Does he? Yeah. He teaches, right? Yeah. He teaches, yeah. And also Maharaj has been, we have been also very blessed and fortunate. Uh, thanks to Nand Kishore Prabhu that Maharaj has been coming to our home since 20 years, <laughs> almost. Maharaj from Sharjah. We, yes, right. When I got married and I came, we lived six years in Sharjah that time also. And later, Maharaj, I want to show you a picture where you and Jepataka Maharaj are together oh. in our Sharjah home. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so they both sannyasis one time were there. So Maharaj has been always coming home and we are very blessed that today again we have him. And I met him recently for Navdeep Mandal Parikrama. When I was in Mayapur, March mid, the Maharaj ke saath I was walking in the Parikrama. Maharaj is every year, all the days, he walks on the Parikrama, which one week ki hoti hai, seven days ki Mayapur mein. Welcome Maharaj, thank you so much. So, is there any special very so, short topic. So Maharaj, we were thinking that today is Sita Naomi, oh. Mother Sita's appearance day, yeah. group and also today is Madhu Pandit's disappearance day and yeah. uh, Janva Mata's appearance day. So maybe a little bit if uh, you want to speak on them, these personalities are the, and then we have Bhagavad Gita, any verse you can. Um, many of them are, some are initiated yeah. devotees. Some are new, some are practicing, some are very new also. Uh -huh. <laughs> and some know, but they are not doing as such very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, very nice to meet everyone anyway. Uh, yeah, as we heard, today is a, an auspicious day. We have what is called a Vaishnava calendar. And on the Vaishnava calendar, they ex they give the names and different personalities when they appeared or when they disappeared, and we uh, give some we try to give some account about these personalities, what they contributed in the line of the teaching of Vaishnavism. So, of course, Mother Sita is the consort of Lord Ramachandra. Worship of Lord Rama has become very fashionable this year <laughs> with our big temple, with the temple opening in Ayodhya. So many people are all visiting Ayodhya. It's uh, very nice to see. The worship of Lord Ram, popular. <coughs> in the UK, we have also Sita Ram Lakshman oh, Hanuman yeah, yeah. in the temple in Bhaktivedanta Manor. Lord Rama is usually in the capital cities, like in Washington, D.C., we have also Rama Temple. 
and in uh, India, in Delhi, we also have Lord Ram there. He's also there in the Juhu temple, of course, in Mumbai. So Mother Sita, is the eternal consort of Lord Ramachandra. As Maharaji was saying, every year I do the Navadvip Parikrama. And Lord Ramachandra also came to Navadvip. There's a Navadvip, the nine islands around Mayapur. And one of the islands is called Modadrumadvip. Lord Ramachandra came there with Mother Sita and Lakshman in the Trita Yuga. <coughs> so long time before Lord Ramachandra came there to Mayapur. And there's a pastime took place. It, it's, it's very beautiful place, Navadweep. It's a lot of uh, forests, a lot of trees. You know, we don't see too many trees over in this part of the world. Some trees, not too many. But in Navadvi, there's a lot of trees. It's very green. So, Mother Sita and Lord Ram and Lakshman, they were in exile at the time, of course. And they were traveling through different forests. And they came to Navadvi, they came to this place, Moda Drumadvi. And Lord Ramachandra, being the Supreme Lord, he knows everything, past, <coughs> present, and future. So he was looking at the beauty of Moda Drumadvi, and he was smiling to himself. So Mother Sita could see Lord Ramachandra smiling and she wondered, she asked him, what is it, what is it that's giving you pleasure? And Lord Ramachandra said to her, he said, I'm thinking how in the future, in the Kali Yuga, I will have an incarnation here in this place. And at that time, you will also be here as my consort, <coughs> as my wife. You will also be here with me. But he said, in the Kali Yuga, when I come <coughs> here, at that, he said, at, at a certain point in my life, I will leave home and I will take sannyas. And Mother Sita said, oh, and you're smiling about it? It's making you happy? You're going to go away and leave me? I will be left at home alone? You will go off and renounce everything? So Lord Ramachandra explained to her, he said, by that separation we will be again united in the spiritual world, that the separation will only be for some time in this material world, but again we will be united in the spiritual world. And it happened that, of course, 500 years ago, Lord Ramachandra appears as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as a young man, was married. His wife was Vishnu Priya. And at the age of 24, while he still had an elderly mother and they had no, no child, Chaitanya left the home, went to a place called Katwa, 
and there he was initiated into the renounced order of life as a sannyasi. So Vishnu Priya was left alone with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's elderly mother, elderly mother Sachimata. Sachimata had a difficult time in her life. Initially, she, she had no child. She had given birth several times, but it was miscarriage. And then finally, she was blessed with a son, an elder son, elder to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Vishwarup. And this Vishwarup, as a young man, he left home. His parents were planning to have him marry. So he was not willing to marry, <coughs> so he left home and he entered also into renounced life. So the elder brother had gone away from home and renounced everything. So Mother Sachi, she didn't want the younger son to do that. So she got him married. So she got him married and the first his first wife, Lakshmi Priya, first wife passed away. She was bitten by a snake and she passed away. So after the first wife departed from the world, Mother Sachi again requested her son to accept another wife, accept a second wife. So the second wife was Vishnu Priya. Vishnu Priya is non-different from Sita, the eternal consort of Lord Ramachandra. However, Chaitanya also left home, 24, young man. His wife was even younger. She was a young woman, 16 years of age, and she was alone with the mother of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in the absence of her husband, she worshipped a deity, just like Maharaji has so many deities here. Vishnu Priya was also given a deity of her husband, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a deity of, we would say, Lord Goranga. You were seeing the Panchatattva there. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the middle with his two hands raised up. The Panchatattva is Lord Chaitanya with his associates, four associates, four different features of the Absolute Truth. There, sometimes we also sing the Panchatattva mantra, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Right, so these are the names of the associates of Lord Chaitanya. Advaita, oh first of all Nityananda, and then Advaita, and Gadarha, and Sriva. So they're all there in the Panchatattva. So Vishnu Priya was a widow, she had become a widow because her husband had renounced, gone off, taken sanya. But she worshipped her husband in his deity form. And, she had this, and that form of Lord Chaitanya is still there. It's if you go to Navadvi, you can see that deity of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they say that deity was worshipped 500 years ago by Vishnu Priya. And they have also the Kuram, the wooden shoes which were worn by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then. So <coughs> Vishnu Priya worshipped that deity throughout her life and she lived to a very old age and throughout her life 
She worshipped that deity of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was her husband in the material world and her eternal consort in the spiritual world. So it's interesting because Vishnu Priya, we said, is Sita in the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra. Now in the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra, we know, you know the story how Lord Rama got married, he had to go to Janakpur. Have you been there to Janakpur? You been there? It's a nice yeah, place, man. very beautiful, huh? Yeah. Very nice place. Uh, Maharaj Janak, he was the father of Sita. Mother Sita was not an ordinary woman. She was born from the earth. She appeared from the earth. Janak Maharaj was plowing. In the very culture, the king will plow one time a year. Even today, in Thailand, uh, in Thailand they have a king, and the king will go once a year, they do a ceremony where they plow the field. They have the royal bulls, they have these special bulls, big bulls with big tusks, you know, and the bulls will plow the field. They have a very special plow which they use. And they say, from the result of the plowing of the field, they can predict how the harvest will be, how the economy will be. They can predict the future. So it's an important ceremony which they observe even to the present time. So one time when Maharaj Janak was doing this, this is in Treta Yuga, millions of years ago, Janak Maharaj was plowing the field and from the earth came this beautiful young baby girl. So Maharaj Janak took care of that child and he brought her up and he could understand she was no ordinary child because in the home of Maharaj Janak was this bow of Lord Shiva. Now usually it would take 200 men to move this bow. It was just impossible for anyone to pick it up and it took 200 people to come and move the bow. But one day Maharaj Janak saw how Sita as a young girl had picked up the bow by herself. So Maharaj Janak was, he could understand this, she is no ordinary girl. She's a very special woman. So he understood, whoever is going to be the husband of this girl, he will have to be as good as her. He will have to be able to pick up the bow and to string the bow. So it was challenged, the announcement was made, and so many kings, so many princes, they all wanted the hand of Sita. And they came, but one after another, they failed miserably. They could not even begin to lift the bow. But then Vishwamitra brought Lord Ramachandra there, and Lord Ramachandra picked up the bow, bent the bow, strung the bow, and pulled the bow, and broke the bow. So Maharaj Janak immediately brought Sita and presented her to Lord Ram to be his wife. And then after some time it happened, Lord Rama is told to go into exile because of Kaikeyi's feeling. So Sita also wants to go because she said, I'm your wife, I should go with you. Lord Rama wanted her to stay in the palace, stay in the comfort of the palace. But the Sita said, no, it's all right, I can come with you, I don't mind. I don't mind to live in the forest and to eat wild berries and fruits. 
and to lay on the bed of leaves. I don't mind the austerity, I don't mind the difficult. I just want to be with you. So Lord Ramachandra was not able to convince his wife to stay back. So she also went with him in exile. So she went with him in exile and accompanied him. But what happened? Surpanika came and she saw how Lord Rama was very handsome and attractive and she desired to enjoy with him. Lord Ramachandra said, no, no, better you go to Lakshman, my brother, he can satisfy you. And then Lakshman told him, no, no, he's my older brother, you should go to And in this way they were teasing and joking with Surpanika. And finally Surpanika got a bit angry and frustrated. And then she tried to attack Sita and Lord Ramachandra had to cut off her nose and ears. So when she was disfigured in that way, she went back to her brother Ravan. And she told Ravan about the beauty of Mother Sita. She told her, she told Ravan that there's a, these two Kshatriyas there in the forest and they have this beautiful <coughs> woman with them. And she knew Ravan liked very much beautiful women. And he was keeping a harem of many beautiful women in his palace for his enjoyment. But when he heard about Sita, he was very attracted. He wanted her. So he set out to get her. And he took advantage of the Vedic culture. He disguised himself as a renounced mendicant and came there begging. Now, Lord Rama, of course, had. But what happened was Marich had been enlisted by Ravan that I want you to distract Ram and Lakshman away from the Sita. I want you to distract them, then I can kidnap her for myself. So Marich took the form of a golden deer and Mother Sita saw the deer and she was attracted and she requested Lord Ram, please can you bring that deer, get that deer? So Lord Ramachandra could understand this was some kind of trick. This was not a proper deer. So he requested Lakshman to stay there and guard Sita. And Lord Ram went after Marich. And he ultimately, of course, he killed Marich. But as he shot Marich, at that time Marich called out, Lakshman, Sita, save me. And Sita and Lakshman, they heard the voice. And Mother Sita turned to Lakshman and said, Lord Rama's in danger, you must go, you must go and help him. And Lakshman said, oh, come on, Lord Rama is not going to have any difficulty. He is all-powerful. How could he be in any danger? Mother Sita then became a little angry and she criticized Lakshman that, oh, you just want to enjoy me. You're jealous of my, you're jealous of my husband. You want to be with me instead of my husband. That's why you don't want to go and help him. So these words were very painful to the heart of Lakshman. So he decided he would go, but before he left, he put a circle around Sita. He put a circle and he said, don't go outside of this circle. So long as you stay within this circle, no harm can come to you. Just like all of us as devotees, we also can protect ourselves. We're protected 
uh, just like Sita, so long as she stayed within that circle, she's protected. So devotee is also protected. We're protected by our vows. In Krishna consciousness, we make vows, you know, we promise cleanliness, austerity, truthfulness, and tapasya. Clean, cleanliness, mercy, austerity, truthfulness. Satyam, sotyam, daya, tapa. Four pillars of religion. If we respect the four pillars of religion, if we don't go away from these things, then we'll always be protected. We cannot be touched by the rabbin-like people. But if we go away, then we're helpless. So Lakshman put a circle, a powerful circle around Mother Sita and told her, don't go outside this circle. <clears throat> Lakshman then went to see what was happening to Lord Rama and then Ravan came disguised as a sadhu and he is coming and he is begging, give me arms, oh mother, give me arms. And Mother Sita being a simple hearted woman, she wanted to give some charity. She thought, oh, a mendicant is coming, let me give some charity. I'll hear some fruits, let me give fruit. But Ravan could not come in the circle because Lakshman had put this circle around Sita. So whenever Ravan would try to come in, his beard would burn. He would be, his body would become on fire. He could not enter into that circle. So he had to lure Sita somehow to get her to come out from that circle. And finally Sita did because she was so eager to give charity. She came out from the circle and as soon as she came out from the circle then Ravana grabbed her and put her on his chariot and went off to Ayodhya, off to uh, Lanka. Of course we should understand the Sita who he took, who Ravana took, this was not the divine Sita who is the eternal consort of Lord Ram. But it was arranged that a Maya Sita was created. A Maya Sita, another Sita who is not the divine mother but who is a manifestation just simply of material nature. So Ravana took that lady, not Mother Sita, it was a Maya Sita he took to Lanka. And of course while Sita was in Ravana's chariot that time Jatayu came and Jatayu fought with Lord Ram and tried to rescue Sita but he failed and Ravana killed him. So then Sita is taken to Lanka and Hanuman is given the job to go and search to find Sita and when he found Sita he told Mother Sita that you can come on my back and I will take you back to your husband. But Mother Sita said, no, my husband should come here and take me, I cannot go with you. I cannot go until my husband comes and, put and rescues me. So Lord Rama came there, of course, he crossed the ocean, he built this bridge across the sea to Lanka and they had the great battle of Lanka and with the help of all the monkeys and the bears, Lord Rama defeated Ravan and his army and took Sita. And when he took Sita back, then he built a big fire and he told Mother Sita, now show your chastity, enter into the fire. 
and Mother Sita entered into the fire, the Maya Sita entered into the fire and from out of the fire came the Divine Sita carried by Agni, the God of Fire. So in this way Mother Sita proved her chastity that although she had apparently been, kid, been kidnapped by Ravan, actually Ravan could never touch Mother Sita because she is the Divine Mother and the demon like Ravan can never lay one finger on the form of Mother Sita. So Lord Ramachandra took Sita back to Ayodhya after the exile was over, they returned to Ayodhya. Lord Ramachandra was coronated as the king and he was very concerned. What do people think about him? What are the people saying about him? And every day he would send out his different spies to hear what is being told about Lord Ram. So it happened that one day there was a barber and this barber had an unchaste wife. His unchaste wife had gone off with another man and after some time she had returned to her husband. So the barber was saying to his wife that, I'm not going to take you back. He said, I am not like Lord Ram. Lord Ram may take his wife back after she's been touched by another man, but I'm not taking you back. So this, these very nasty words were overheard by one of the servants of Lord <coughs> Ram and he came back and told Lord Rama what he had heard. And when Lord Rama heard this, then he told Lakshman, take Sita to the ashram of Valmiki. And at this time Sita was pregnant. She was carrying a child in her womb. So Lakshman took Sita to Valmiki's ashram and Sita remained there in the ashram of Valmiki. There she gave birth to her twin sons, Love and Kush. And after she delivered the two children, then she returned to the earth. She had been born from the earth and then the earth opened up and she entered into the earth again. And in this way she finished her pastime with Lord Ramachandra in this world. However, Lord Ramachandra was remaining. He was still here. He was the king and he was ruling the world. It was Treta Yuga and in Treta Yuga people live 10,000 years. The duration of life is like 10,000 years. So Lord Ramachandra was ruling the world for thousands of years. Now when a king does sacrifice, wife should be there. When any Brahman, when we do sacrifice, the man will sit and the wife will sit by his side. And Lord Ramachandra is the king and he has to do sacrifice, he has to perform yagya for the welfare of the kingdom. But he has no wife because Mother Sita has disappeared and Lord Ramachandra had vowed, Eka Patni Vrat, only one wife. He cannot take another wife. So what does he do? He has a deity made of Mother Sita. We were telling Vishnu Priya in Kali Yuga, she's worshipping deity of her husband. Treta Yuga, Lord Ramachandra is doing yagya. His wife is in the form of a deity by his side. In this way Lord Ramachandra kept his responsibilities as a king and he kept his vows also to only take one 
Why? You know, great kings, they would have many, we know Krishna had many wives, right? And similarly, Maharaj Dasarath also had many wives, but Lord Ramachandra, only one wife. So he kept his vow. And with the help of the deity, Mother Sita was there by his side and he could perform the yajna. So today is the appearance day of Mother Sita and today is also the appearance day Janava Mata. Janava Mata is the consort of Lord Nityananda. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we said, he was also married. Vishnu Priya was his wife, but then he renounced. He took sannyas. So Nityananda, he is non different from Lord Balaram. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna. And Nityananda is Balarama, Krishna and Balarama. You can see Krishna, is it? Oh, that's Krishna and Krishna. <laughs> I can't see very well. Yeah. Anyway, Krishna and Balarama, they're in our temple in Vrindavan. You can see the deities there. So Krishna and Balarama, they come as Chaitanya and Nityananda, or we say Gora Nitai. There's one over there. Hmm? There's one over there. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Gora, Gora Nitai. Brajendra Nandana say, Sachi Sutta Hailahe, Balaram, Oilo Nitai. Right. Hmm. So Krishna comes as Chaitanya. And Lord Nityananda comes as Lord Balarama. Uh, or Lord Balarama comes as Nityananda. So Lord Nityananda was uh, born in Ekachakra. Ekachakra is a village in Radhadesh, which is a place, if you go there, you can go from Mayapur, it takes about three, four hours to go now. The roads are improved there. It's a nice place, a very small village with many cows and buffalo. <laughs> very old, traditional village. So it's the birthplace of Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda had gone as a young boy. He'd been taken by a sadhu. <laughs> Some sadhu had come there to Ekachakra and he had requested the couple, that, that this one couple, uh, Harel Pandit and Padmavati, they were the parents of Nityananda. So Harel Pandit had invited this mendicant to come to his home and take food because he saw the mendicant was traveling and he had no home. So he'd come to my home, take some meal, have some food there. And he said, so Hari Pandit took care of him and then he said to the Brahmana, he said to this mendicant, if there's any way I can serve you, if you need anything that I can help you, kindly ask, it will be my pleasure to serve you. So the Brahmana said, well, he said, you know, I'm traveling to holy places. I'm going to visit holy places and I'm alone. He said, it would be very good if I had someone with me. He said, you have a nice son. Can you give me your son? Let your son come with me and he can come with me to all the holy places. So <laughs> it, it was not expected that the, the Brahmana would ask, but this was the plan of the Lord that Lord Nityananda should be freed from the entanglement with the mother and father and let him go with the sadhu, go and visit all the holy places. And for many years the boy went and traveled with the sadhu. They visited all the holy places. 
And then after some time, Lord Chaitanya had appeared and Lord Chaitanya had begun the Sankirtan movement. And then it came time for Lord Nityananda to come there to Mayapur and be connected with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <coughs> and the, the Chaitanya Bhagwat describes how Lord, Ch uh, Lord Chaitanya told the devotees that he'd had a dream and he said, a great personality is coming. He's going to come to join with us. Very soon he's coming. So the devotees were, you know, thought very nice and we, they didn't know who it was. And then a few days later, Lord Chaitanya told the devotees that, I told you before, a great personality is coming. Now he's already come. He's here in Mayapur. You have to go and find him. So, uh, Haridas Thakur and Srivas Pandit, they were sent, go and find this personality. And they spent the whole day going to all the different houses and looking everywhere. They could not find anyone. They came back and said, we don't find anyone, we can't, we can't see anybody there. So then Lord Chaitanya said, I will take you. And so the, all the devotees, they all went together following Chaitanya and they went to the home of Anantacharya. Just beside our Iskon temple in Mayapur, there's a further, just if you go towards the Ghat to cross the Ganga, on that way there, there's one temple there. And the, you can, this is the home of Nandan Acharya. So this Nandan Acharya, he, his home was where Nityananda was there. And Lord Chaitanya came there with all the devotees and they saw Lord Nityananda there. So when Lord Chaitanya saw Lord Nityananda, the two were reunited. And they began to again have Sankirtan and to spread the Krishna consciousness movement. So Lord Chaitanya, he took sannyas and he requested Lord Nityananda to stay in Bengal and to preach. And so it happened Lord Nityananda decided he would accept a wife. So it was arranged, there was a, the, 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 there were two daughters of a brahmana, a very pious devoted brahmana had these two daughters and it was decided that the two daughters should both be given in marriage to Lord Nityananda, Vasudha and Janava, they were two sisters. And they were both given in marriage to the one man. It would be difficult today, wouldn't it? Could you imagine? Two wives and one husband, two sisters. <laughs> difficult. Anyway, Lord Nityananda married both these girls. And they, be, the, uh, after some time, Lord Nityan, Lord, it came time for Lord Nityan. Lord Chaitanya left the world and then after some time Lord Nityananda also departed from the world. And after he departed from the world, Janava went on to become the Acharya. She became like a spiritual master and she accepted disciples. She initiated people, became a guru. And not, but not only was she just a guru, but she became like the acharya of the whole sampradaya. So her position was very important. And if you go to Radha Kund, have you been to Radha Kund? No? Radha Kund, you've been? Yeah. Radha Kund. There's a, Radha Kund was discovered by Lord Chaitanya. Lord, 
people didn't know where is Radhakon, Lord Chaitanya discovered it because he's Krishna. So he thought, this is Radhakon. So Janava went there to Radhakon. And there's a place there where she sat in meditation at the side of Radhakon. And she entered into all the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And then there was another occasion they had the very first Gaur Purnima festival because Lord Chaitanya had left the world. So it was decided they would hold a Gaur Purnima festival because Lord Chaitanya had appeared on the day of Holi, what we call Gaur Purnima. And so they decided every year we should have a festival. So. Uh, the festival was arranged at the home of Naratam Das Thakur. It's in Bangladesh. What's the name of that place? Keturi. Keturi, yeah. Keturi. So Naratam Das Thakur. You know, there was no email, and there were no mobile phones, but somehow word got around all the Vaishnavas that there's a big festival to be held in Katuri. And all the devotees came from Vrindavan and Puri and Navadvit. They all went to Katuri and it was a big festival. And Janava was there and she was the main personality there. And they had also beautiful deities of Radha and Krishna installed for the worship. And they had wonderful kirtans, just like you have kirtans today, you have so these wonderful kirtaniers come, you have Govinda Maharaj and Indra Jumna Maharaj and so many others coming and singing. So Naratam was there and he was singing kirtan, so many other wonderful Vaishnavas. But it was Janava who was the head of all of them and she was respected by everyone. So she played a very important role in strengthening the Sampradaya after the departure of Lord Chaitanya and then Lord Nityananda. Janava did a lot to keep everyone united, working together. Just like within our own movement in recent times, of course, we lost Srila Gopal Krishna Goswami and several other spiritual teachers are not in good health, any time can leave the body. So it's important that we are all able to work together and be united and continue to propagate the mission of Krishna consciousness. So how much more difficult it was 500 years ago with Lord Chaitanya departing from the world and then Lord Nityananda also disappearing. And Janava played a very important role in strengthening the Sampradaya. It said Janava Mata is non different from Ananga Manjari. Ananga Manjari is the younger sister of Radharani. So she came in Mahaprabhu's pastime as Janava Mata. So today also we're remembering Janava Mata, two ladies, Sita and Janava Mata, both being honored today. And today is also disappearance day of a very great devotee, personality called Madhu Pandit. Madhu Pandit established the worship of the deity of Gopinath. Gopinath, the deity of Gopinath. There are three main deities in Vrindavan. You, maybe you know that song, we sing that. Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan. Shri Govinda Gopina Madhu. So three deities, Govinda, 
Gopinath and Madana Moha. They are the, the uh, original deities there in Vrindavan, established by the Goswamis. Actually, these deities were from the time of Lord Krishna. They were originally brought by Prajana, who was the grandson of Krishna. And together these three deities are worshipped, and they're still worshipped, but not in the original deities are not in Vrindavan. They've been brought to Jaipur. Yeah. Uh, Madhu, Madan Mohan is in Karoli. Which is between Jaipur and <laughs> So Gopinath was the deity worshipped by Madhu Pandit. The Vedic knowledge is in three divisions Sambandha Gyan, Abhidaya Gyan, Prayojana Gyan. Right? So Sambandha, the relationship, the Lord and the energies of the Lord. And that deity of Sambandha Gyan is Madan Mohan. And then Abhidaya, the process of devotion. The process of devotion, the, the deity is Govindaji. And Prayojana, the goal of the pro, the goal of devotional service, of course, to develop to develop love of God, Prima, that is through Gopinath. So Madhu Pandit was responsible for bringing the deity of Gopinath into prominence and teaching all of us how to worship Lord Gopinath. So today is also his disappearance day. So in this way we are honoring these three great devotees just by remembering their pastimes and their contribution to the Krishna consciousness movement. Anybody has any question? Have any? Yes? Somebody was asking me about Lord Rama, why he left Sita Devi after hearing from only one person in the kingdom? So, what answer should we give? Why he left? Yeah, Mother Sita. Why he sent Sita yeah. to. Well, just like Lord Ramachandra told Mother Sita that in the Kali Yuga I will take sannyas and leave you. But that separation that increases the love between Rama and Sita. The feeling of separate. Just why did Krishna leave the gopis? Why did Krishna go to Vrindavan and go away from Vrindavan and leave the gopis? It was to increase their feeling of love for Krishna. And that brings them closer together and makes them able to be reunited in the spiritual world. They're always together in the spiritual world. Ayodhya is there also in the spiritual sky. In the Vaikuntha region there's also Ayodhya. Ayodhya is higher than actually Vaikuntha planets. It's a special region where the Lord enjoys with his devotees. And in, there's also Mathura there. There's Dwarka. These places are also there in the spiritual sky. And so Lord Rama and Sita, they're together in Ayodhya, in the spiritual sky. They come together here in this world, and for some time it appears they're separated, but they're always together in the spiritual world. So it's pastime. The feeling of separation increases their attachment for each other.
we say familiarity breeds contempt. You know, if when you're with someone all the time, you don't always appreciate them, but after they're gone, then you feel more the uh, the feeling, the attachment, and the, and, and the loss is great. So that separation was to increase the feeling of love, the attachment for each other. And sometimes people criticize Lord Rama that how he could do this, you know. And they may also criticize Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that, oh, he took sannyas and he left his young wife, he left his old mother, but he took, the, the, he entered into the renounced life for the higher purpose. If he'd stayed at home, then he can deliver his wife and mother. But what about the world? You see, the Lord comes into this world to deliver the world, not to just stay at home and deliver only his wife and mother. So for the sake of the world, Mahaprabhu had to leave home, enter into the renounced life. So materialistic people, they cannot understand these things. And they, they will criticize, they will condemn. Oh, very wrong, no, he shouldn't have done that. But for the higher purpose. Just like Ramanujacharya. Ramanujacharya, he was also in household life as a young man. He left the household life. And he spread the Sri Vaishnavism so many places. He initiated so many people, so many disciples. He did so much for the good of the planet. So for the higher purpose, for the higher cause. And Lord Nityananda, in contrast, Lord Nityananda entered into household life. He accepted the wife. So it's not very important, actually. You can be in family life, you can be renounced. There's no difference. The important thing is to be in Krishna consciousness. There are 12 authorities in devotional service, the Mahajan. Right? You know the names? Yeah. Shambhu, Kumara Kapila, Janaka Bhishma. Yeah? Balir Vyasaki Vayam. Right. The twelve Mahajan. If you examine it, Swayambu means who? Brahma. Brahma. Is he a Grihasta? Yes. Yes. He's a Grihasta. Right? Brahma. He has a wife. What's he, who's his wife? Saraswati. Right? Yes, yes. Do you know the story why Brahma why Brahma is only worshipped to Puskar? Right? Brahma is only worshipped to Puskar, right? Yeah. Have you been to Puskar? Yes. Did you worship Brahma? Yeah. yeah. So we, I stay in Ajmer only. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway, you know, you know, Brahma was supposed to do a yagya, and the wife was not coming. They said, it's time for the yagya, it's an auspicious time. He's telling the wife, the wife should say, I'm coming, I'm coming, just wait, just wait. <laughs> and the time came for the yagya, and still she had not come. So they, they told him, take another wife. So there was another girl there, Gayatri. <coughs> she became the wife of Brahma. And then finally Saraswati came and she thought, oh, oh, you've already done the yagya. 
Oh, you've taken another wife, is it? Oh. So she was not happy about it. She put the curse that you will only be worshipped in one place. Puskar. And of course, the girl also got cursed. Your mantra will never be chanted aloud. The Gayatri mantra is not supposed to be chanted aloud. So, Swayambhu is a, he's a, he's a house, Grihastha, Brahma. Swayambhu Brahma, Grihastha. Narada, is he Brahmachari? Narada is Brahmachari, right? Narada doesn't marry. And Shambhu, Lord Shiva, does he have a wife? Yes, of course, Parvati. Swambhu, Narada, Shambhu, Komar, the Kumars, they're Brahmachari. Komar, Kapila, Brahmachari. Komar, Kapila, Manu, Manu, Grihastha. Manu is a Grihastha. Pralada, is Pralad Brahmachari? Pralad Maharaj? Grihastha. Grihastha, right. Yeah, it's a Grihastha. Pralad Janaka Grihasta Bhishma Brahmacharya Bali Maharaj Grihasta Vyasaki Sukadeva Goswami Brahmacharya Yamaraj Is Yamaraj Grihasta? I don't, I, I don't know. I, is he? Yama, Yamaraj is Brahmachari? No. Must be difficult to be the wife of Yamaraj. <laughs> What's your husband do? Oh, he's Yamaraj. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I think that. Yeah, Yeah? Is he? A brave woman. Because uh, she's telling me uh, there is someone, Ayu, Ayu, in South, in Tamil. So we should not say Ayu. Ayu, yeah. Because Brahm, uh, his wife. His wife. His wife. His wife. His wife. Okay. This is seven and five, no? Mm. This is seven, seven, I think, Brahmachari, five. Mm. Anyway, the point is, Grihe Tako, Vani Tako, Shabha Hari Boli Tako. Doesn't matter if you're Grihasta or Vani Prasta or renounced or whatever. If you're the devotee, then we want your association. That's the important thing. Who's the devotee? They may be Krihasta, they may be Brahmachari, whatever. That's not important. What is important is that they chant the holy name, they worship Krishna, they're devoted to Krishna. That's a real duty. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other question? <coughs> Maybe Mataji will do some more kirtan for us. Hmm? She's there. <laughs> Where is she? Kirtan? Huh? Do you want me to add <laughs> 
I think you only do it in your house. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shemati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Nami Rama Rama Hare 
Singh Maharaj ki Jai Allah Prabhu Pad ki Jai One by one we all can go and Hare Krishna Come and have some prasad Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 